promise don't scare me like that. <laughs> I mean, when you got your eyes closed and you're meditating upon the Lord, and then all of a sudden you look up, you think you see a, a, a pre-incarnation of the Lord. Uh, uh, <laughs> and you, I was sitting there just jumped. I thought, my Lord, what the world's going on here? Bless the Lord forevermore. And I noticed there wasn't no wings on you, brother. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. I mean, it's it just kind of a shocker, you know, because you're meditating on the Lord, and then all of a sudden you open your eyes, and there's somebody standing there going like this. <laughs> Bless God. Hallelujah. God's a good God, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the service this morning. Some things we discussed uh, we don't like to get into. We don't like to be... Uh, confrontational and, and different things, but some things just need to be brought out. And somebody said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. They need to come to an head, bless the Lord, because if they don't, uh, you never go anywhere. You're just spinning your wheels uh, with the Lord. Praise God forevermore. And we just thank the Lord for his uh, encouragement and thank the Lord for building the body of Christ together in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Every one of us, listen, we're a part of the body of Christ. We can't save the little toe. Well, we have no need of the little toe. I'll guarantee you, if you stub your toe, you know it's going to hurt. Am I right? Yes. Go through the uh, dark room at night, stub your toe, and I'll guarantee you, you'll start screaming and hollering. And everybody know you're in the house. You'll wake everybody up. Bless the Lord. So that toe's important. Amen? Yes. Every part... Listen, of the body is vitally, vitally, vitally important. Hallelujah. And every part of the body is to be connected to the head, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Matt, come on up here. We want to pray with you, brother, if you would. Come on over here. I know you're writing something down there, but we want to pray with you. Me and Matt, we had a, we had a little conversation in the bathroom. Nothing like having conversations in the bathroom. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God can really be. He revealed himself in the bathroom. So, seems like every time I'm in there, he's in there. Right? <laughs> Bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Matt's going to move over to this area. He wants to move over here. And Susan, bless the Lord, and try to get a place over here. And wanting to sell his place. Oh, you're in Lima, right? Oh, yeah. You're over on the Fairfield. east side of Lima, yeah. right? That's a long ways to travel, man. Back and forth. And, and we just thank God for your faithfulness, brother. No doubt about it. You and Susan both. Bless the Lord. So everybody stretch her hand this way that God just showed Matt favor. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for Matt and Susan. Lord, we just thank you for this family, for their dedication that they show towards you, Father. And Lord, I thank you so very much, God, for their faithfulness. Lord God, for we know a faithful person shall abound with blessing. And Lord, we know that you have blessed Matt and you've blessed Susan. Lord God, above and beyond, Father, as we look at the blessing that you have bestowed and father god we know that you'll take care of everything all situations selling his house lord and finding a house in this area father in the name of the lord jesus christ and father we thank you and we praise you as that takes place and transpires in jesus mighty name and we say to you be glorified praised and honored in the name of jesus amen and amen. amen praise the lord we just amen. believe that in the name of the lord jesus hallelujah and enoch god hasn't forgot about you and in that house that you're selling, bless the Lord, don't give up, brother. I'm telling you, listen, it, your promise is coming down that dusty road. Bless the Lord. I, I don't see James in here. I know he's here someplace. He might be back in the back, but I see him walk through there. I thought I did anyhow. Maybe I didn't. But, but anyhow, James, he, his house, he, he had it for quite some time. And then all of a sudden, bang, I mean, it, it up and sold. Bless the Lord. And, and uh, he got in a house, and then uh, we went to sell the house that the Lord placed him in because God gave him a good opportunity to buy a different house and he wasn't really even looking to sell that house and, the, and somebody wanted to buy that house and he bought another house so we thank God, hallelujah, for God's blessing in the name of the Lord. So I, let that be a word of encouragement because uh, I went by your place today, me and I had my, my grandson with me today. We had the grand privilege of watching him while Jeremy and Mandy went over to Red Lobster and left their, their son with us to eat uh, sausage and eggs and uh, toast. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I told uh, Ethan, I said, Ethan, I said, you and Grandpa, we're going to get on the motorcycle, we're going to go for a ride. So 
I threw the helmet on him, and uh, uh, we took off, and we went up on uh, up through the river road there, and then went up by your house, and I seen the sign out there. You must have a different reel or something on it. And, and I thought, well, praise God, I, I, Lord, I just claim that thing sold in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. So we believe that in Jesus' name. I never, never, never give up. Keep believing. Keep uh, trust in the Lord. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt, you'll see that answer come to, to pass in Jesus' name. It's just as good as sold. Put it in your spirit. Put it in your heart. Bless God. God's going to do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's go back, if we would, please. Uh, uh, I didn't get finish up with uh, Romans chapter 6. And uh, I want to try to just kind of skip through 7 or just maybe deal with 7 just a little bit and then go into chapter 8, which gives us the victory. Amen. Yes. Chapter 8 gives us the victory. Now understand something. When we're talking about 6, 7, and 8, Romans 6, 7, and 8, I've done a teaching in this. I don't know. It's probably been, man, I don't know, two, three years ago, maybe, maybe longer. I don't know. But, folk, I'm telling you, listen, you've got to read and reread over and over and over again to get this in your spirit. You don't, it just didn't come to me just automatically. But as you keep reading and reading, you, you discover that, man, oh, man, you know, I thought I was living by the Spirit, but really I was living by the law because I was making laws in my own self. But, man, I'm telling you what, hear me. When I, when, when, I, when I seen what the Lord was trying to show me here, praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. I let loose of everything that I was trying to do and let God do it through me. Man, I'm telling you what, it was, like, it was a haven of rest. I, I, I found the niche with the Lord. I found the victory with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said this this morning. You know, there's a lot of Christians... They're Christian, but they're miserable Christians. They're living miserably. They, they come to church out of duty. They come to read the Bible out of duty instead of out of love. When you first got saved, was it a duty to read the Word of God? No. Was it a duty to come to church? No, it wasn't a duty to do that. Hallelujah. But out of love, bless God, you desire to do that. Where did that come from? Did that come from, from, from your flesh or did that come from the Spirit? It came from the Spirit. The Spirit, listen, hallelujah, working in and through you, desiring the very very things of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's the Spirit that drawed us even to a relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. How many know the Spirit convicts us? Praise God. If we're a sinner, we don't have a relationship with the Lord. And they're sitting back in the chairs, bless the Lord and, and you give a salvation message or God, the, heart, the Lord begins to prick the heart of, of the sinner and before long you're convicted and you come and give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all the work of the Spirit of God that draws people to, to Jesus and to the cross. And somebody said, Amen. Hallelujah. But that's not, the, that, that's not the completeness. Hear me. We've got to stick with the cross constantly and continuously for sanctification because you can't do it on your own. I'm going to say it again. You can't do it on your own. If you're living by a system of, of rules and regulations and laws, look at me, you're going to be one of the most miserable Christians on the face of the earth. Stop and think of this a second. You'll be most miserable. Now understand something. Somebody says, well, you know, well, the, we've got to have some type of restrictions. Yes, the Word of God is a restriction, hear me, child of God, to produce fruits of righteousness. But we can't live by a set of rules of laws. You know, and it kind of amuses me that, that you get into some churches and you read their constitution and bylaws and says to be a member, well, you can't smoke, you can't drink, you can, you, you got to wear a dress down across your ankles, all different types of things that they put you under. Are you hearing me? Can I tell you something? You might see that they might be saved, but you look at them. They are miserably saved. They're not enjoying salvation. They're, because why? Because they're trying to live up to some type of performance that maybe, maybe a, a, a board of directors have placed in the church and, and, and they're trying to live up to that and they find out that, man, I can't live up to that. How many know that you can't live the law? You can't live up to the Ten Commandments. Let me ask this question. 
What was the commandments? Why was they given? Why was it? The commandments was given to show us that we're sinful. Am I right? And, and, and the law, if you look in chapter 7 of Romans, getting a little bit ahead of what I want to say tonight, but if you look in chapter 7 of, of Romans, you'll find out that, that Paul, after conversion, thought that he could live by a system of laws. But he said, I'm trying the best that I can possibly try, but he says, I'm failing miserably. He said, the very thing that I don't want to do, I do that. Anybody ever been there before? I've been there. Probably everybody in here has been there. You might be there now. But can I tell you something? Man, the Bible is a book of good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. One more time. Good news. good news. The Bible is a book of good news. Paul says, I'm failing miserably. I thought that after I was saved, I could keep the law in my own willpower, in my own strength. Paul knew the law inside and out. Hear me. I mean, you, he could have been a, well, he could have been a scholar. He went to, to the to the top ranked college of that time under Nero. He knew the law. He said he's a Pharisee of, of Pharisees, of, above my peers. In other words, he is a valid Victorian of his class. He knew the law and he thought after it, Christ had come into his heart and life, I can live by a system of rules and regulations. But he said, I found myself failing miserably. Miserably. I want to obey the law. I want to do this, but I can't. I, I don't know how to do it. I'm trying with everything I've got. I don't know about you, but how many know willpower isn't enough? Listen to overcome the sin nature. Paul says, I will to do good, but I'm failing miserably. Who can deliver me from this body of sin? Then he goes on. With an exclamation. But thanks be unto God. Through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Hallelujah. So what's he saying there? He's saying this. Hallelujah. The triumph comes through the victory. Of the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. The victory is in the cross. And somebody said. Amen and amen. So therefore our faith has got to be placed. Totally and completely in the cross. Why? Because Jesus fulfilled the law in the flesh. The law showed us how bad we were. But it has no remedy, listen, for the sin problem. All it is, is like a, the law is like a mirror. We look into the law, or look into that mirror, and it shows, listen, the discrepancies. It shows the ugliness, but it had nothing, it had in it nothing Hear me, to change that. And Paul says, oh man, you know what a wretched person that I am. And any Christian that's living by a system of laws, hear me, you're a miserably saved Christian. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to show you tonight, bless the Lord, is that, listen, all victory comes through the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we place our faith there, look at me, it gives the Holy Spirit leeway to eradicate the sins of the flesh in us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. It causes us to be more like Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, less of me and more of Him. As I said this morning, our will has a lot to do. Why? Because I will the Holy Spirit to do His will in me. That's our part. That's our part. Hallelujah. If we're not white knuckling and saying, bless God, I'm going to overcome this besetting sin by, by not doing that. You're trying that in your own willpower. And can I tell you, listen, you're going to fail. You will fail miserably. I've talked to many Christians that said, you know, I'm going to try to be a Christian. I said, you know what? You won't make it. You won't make it. You can't try to be a Christian. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Understand something. Bless the Lord. You in yourself cannot live that victorious life, what God wants us to live. It only comes through the power of God's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's the Spirit in me 
living this life through me, bless the Lord. You see, what happened at, at conversion, hear me, Christ comes into our heart by how? The Holy Spirit. Am I right? Hallelujah. Through the Holy Spirit. Well, we talked about the law, and, and, and you can use any law here, hear me. We can make up laws our own self. And I said that this morning. But uh, if we're, uh, Christ came and fulfilled the law, and now he lives in my heart and in my life, and he has taken care of the sin problem for me. So therefore, everything that I, I'm going to be, everything that I am, I put all confidence and trust in him. For instance, I've said it many times, I've had a bad temper. My wife can testify to that. I've had a bad, bad temper, bad, bad temper. And I'm not proud of that fact. But can I tell you something? Even after I got saved, I was troubled with that. It bugged me. I wanted to get rid of it, but I couldn't get rid of it until... I discovered this. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit showed me through Scripture, bless the Lord forevermore. If you'll let me take it from you, hallelujah, I'll eradicate it out of your life. And you know what? I was trying and trying and trying. I'd get up and say, I'm not going to blow my temper. I'm not going to get mad. This, this, this. You see, I was making laws before. Making a law. And sure enough, I'll guarantee you, somebody's going to come along and make you mad. Am I right? They're going to make you mad. And man, as sure as I'm, I'm, I'm standing here, are, are some events going to make you mad. And all of a sudden, you, you blow your top. All of a sudden, you lose it. And you go, oh God, I, I, I promised that I wouldn't do it. But you're trying to do it in your own strength and your own willpower. Here's the key. I can't overcome this thing, Lord. It's got to be the strength of your Holy Spirit. And I rely totally and completely upon the Holy Spirit to take this thing out of my life. Amen. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You see, Christ has already done it for us. Hallelujah to the You know what? What, a, what rejoicing that is. What glory that is, is that, and some would say, well, you know, if, if that's the case, you know, bless God, you know, I can sin, I can do anything I want to do. No, grace is, I said it this morning, grace is not a license to, for you to sin, it's a license from sin. Hear me. And, and no real true Christian desires to sin. Bless the Lord. But understand something, the sin nature is still in us. But it's got to be reckoned dead. I'm dead to the sin nature. Say it with me. I'm dead to the sin nature. Hallelujah. Remember what, I don't know what it was last week or two weeks ago, my wife and I we went up to uh, Bass Pro Shop. She didn't go to the Bass Pro Shop, but I dropped her off at Penny's. But we went up to Bass, I went up to Bass Pro Shop, but I, I dropped her off at Penny's, and I'd go to the bathroom, so I went into Penny's and come out of Penny's, and it, that, it was a mall like there just before you get into Toledo. And uh, they got a walkway, you know, where you walk across the, the driveway. And, of course, uh, you know, all the, the cars have got to stop for the pedestrians. And uh, so you're just used to walking out. So I don't really just walk out because some don't obey that. Good way to go on home to meet your maker. Amen. But anyhow, uh, you know, I, as I walked out uh, to get in a car to go, back, to go to Bass Pro Shop, well, you know, I, there was a car going this way and a, car, a truck coming this way. So I st kind of step out a little bit like this and stop and look this way and I look that way to see if these guys are going to stop, you know. So the truck stopped and goes, I'm going to crawl. The other guy was over there, you know, and he's just kind of looking at me like this. So, I, you know, I didn't pay much attention. I went across. And then when I went across, well, he went behind me, and he called me everything that white man. I mean, cussing, pointing fingers, all different things. Well, I want to tell you something. Something down in me started bristling up. How many know that wasn't the Spirit of the Lord? Immediately, the Spirit of the Lord said, put it down. 
Put it down. Just let it go. If you, you know what? If I let the place get control, look at me. This is what I've done. I'd have jumped in the car, ran that guy down, run up beside him and say, say that to my face outside of that car. Hear me. Understand, the sin nature is still inside of us. But we have got to be dead to that sin nature. And somebody said, amen and amen. And if you're not, listen, if you don't look at me, it's going to get you in hot water. You're going to start saying things you shouldn't say. You're going to start opening up your mouth and words are going to start coming out of you that you, 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 you shouldn't even be saying. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Understand something, folk. Everything about us has got to be spirit-led. Everything. You rely totally and completely upon the Spirit of God. You know what? Some of the most, uh, some of the most, um, uh, uh, how's the, what, how do I want to uh, phrase this? Uh, some of the, the most outspoken Christians can be the most critical Christians. Has anybody ever seen uh, a car, and it looks like that car is put together with bumper stickers, prepare to meet your maker, uh, all different types of things, judgment days coming, all different types of things on that, on that sticker. And all of a sudden, listen, maybe somebody pulls out in front of them and they give them a finger. Automatically, man, I mean, they blow their top or blow their temper and give them a finger. How many know that's not a testimony for God? That's right. All that's doing is just revealing, listen, what's on the inside of an individual. And can I tell you something? If a temper comes up, that isn't bad in itself. It's just showing you that, hey, the sin nature is trying to revive on the inside of you. Hallelujah. He's got to be rendered dead. And you say, Holy Spirit, I remember now, bless God, hallelujah, that I died with Christ. <coughs> Praise the Lord. It's not I that lives, but it's Christ living in me. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of the living God. And somebody said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, look at this in the 6th verse, uh, uh, Romans 6, 6. He said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Hallelujah. If, you know, if Paul wrote this in here, that henceforth we should not serve sin, look at me, that means that we don't have to serve sin. Am I right? Hallelujah. We don't have to be a prey to the sin nature. Bless the Lord. Look what the seventh verse says. Let's read it. For he that is dead is free from sin. Let's read it one more time. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now I ask you a question this morning. When did I die? When did I die? You died when you accept Christ as Lord and Savior. Hear me. When you accept His atoning death on the cross of Calvary, you died with Him. Hallelujah. That old man was, all the sin of the world was placed on Jesus. You died with Him. Hallelujah. When He was put into the tomb, look at me, that old man was put into the tomb. We're to reckon ourselves dead to sin nature. Hallelujah. The very same way. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, Went into the grave, you went into the grave with him. When Christ rose on the third day, look at me, you resurrected as well in the name of the Lord. But he resurrected a brand new person. Hear me. He resurrected a spirit. And can I tell you something? You and I have a resurrection and we're led of the spirit. We're born of the spirit of God. So therefore, it's the spirit that leads us and it's the spirit that guides us. And it's the Spirit that directs us. Hallelujah. Everything is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit eradicates the deeds of the flesh in us. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Our responsibility, once again, is to allow the Holy Spirit to do His work in us. Praise the Lord. As I said this morning about the ironing board. You can't take out wrinkles if you've got a cold iron, it's got to be a hot iron. And we don't like the heat a lot of times. Amen? At least I don't like the heat. But bless God, nevertheless, it's the best for me. 
Hallelujah. It, 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 it shows me that my dependency is upon the Lord. He's got to clean this thing up in me because I don't have any strength to do it. Bless God. Hallelujah. Now if we be dead with Christ, look what he says in 8 verse. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Now look what he says here in the 11th verse. Let's read it. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Or the sin nature. But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Likewise, reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Now look at the 12th verse. Let's read it. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Praise the Lord. We're not to be controlled by the sin nature any longer. And you know what? If we're a carnal Christian and we walk by our flesh, hear me. Hear me. You're going you're gonna to be controlled by the sin nature. Stop and think of this. Hallelujah. What we strive for is excellency with the Lord. I want to mature in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be more like Him every day of my life. Hallelujah to the Lamb. To where when people look at me, I don't have to say a word to them, but they can tell by my conduct, hallelujah, what I do, what I say, hear me, they can tell that there's something different about us. Shouldn't the church be different than the world? Amen. There ought to be something different to where, you know, the outside world can, can look at the inside of the church and say, man, truly something's different about them. They're all together different than what we are. Well, you know, they, they, don't, they, don't, uh, uh, they don't go out to the bars, they don't go out to this, they don't do this, they don't do that. They, they, you know, they're all together, their conversation is altogether different from us. <coughs> the, and the reason why is because we're the light of the world. And can I tell you something? If we're led of the flesh and being a carnal Christian, we're a bad example to the outside world. I said we're a bad example. And that's not to try to put anybody down, bless God, but it's an encouragement, hallelujah, to strive to be led of the Spirit of the Lord. Everything about us. I've said it many times in this church. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and wicked spirits in high places. Why is it that we think our warfare is in the natural? It's not in the natural. You cannot fight, listen, the devil by, by natural means. It's got to take the Spirit of God to overcome. And somebody said, Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I, anything outside of the leadership of the Holy Spirit, anything outside of the cross of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah, once again, I'm not talking about the wooden gibbet, but I'm talking about what He done to finish work on the cross. Anything outside of that that we put our faith in, look at me, it is misplaced faith, and you will fail miserably. Miserable. We've got to anchor our faith and our trust in the finished work of Calvary. And in doing so, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It gives the Holy Spirit leeway to eradicate a bad temper. Hear me? Or a foul mouth. Or what have you. A lot of times we take a lot of excess baggage into our walk in relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. And the only way that they can be taken out is we allow the Holy Spirit to take it out. Hallelujah. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither, look what it says, read it, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now look at the 14th verse. This makes me shout and happy. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. 
When we start putting laws, uh, you know, in our walk, hear me, you know what? We start failing miserably. The joy leaves us. The peace leaves us. Hear me. Hallelujah. But when we put our confidence, bless God in the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of the living God does the work for us. And can I tell you something? Hallelujah. Those that will allow the Spirit to work in them, I'll show you a happy Christian. I'll show you a peaceful Christian. Bless the Lord. I'll show you a joyful Christian. But if you, but if you allow the dictates and appetites of our flesh to rule and reign, hear me, child of God, I'll show you a miserable Christian. I'll show you an unhappy Christian. Hear me. I'll show you a Christian. Hear me, child of God, that, 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 that on all four fronts of their lives, hear me, bless the Lord, they are miserable. Miserable. Hallelujah. And Christ doesn't want us to live a miserable Christian life, but he wants us to live an abundant life living right here on the face of the earth. Some would say, well, man, when I get into heaven, I'm going to rejoice. Well, why don't we rejoice now? The reason why is a lot of times we'll let the flesh dictate to us, well, I had a bad day, so I'm not doing nothing. Right. Am I right? Yeah. You see, you're functioning and operating out of the flesh. That's carnality. That's the old man coming up. Bless the Lord. That man has got to be put down and Christ glorified in the life. Bless the Lord. Look at me. We're going to have bad days. Yeah. <laughs> come on. I said we're going to have bad days. They're going to come. But those bad days shouldn't dictate the way that you believe or the way that you act with the Lord. Am I right? Amen. Hallelujah. Am I talking to anybody here tonight? Yeah. Bless God. You see, if you get out of bed in the morning, you stub your toe, and you walk outside, or you walk out in the living room, and the dog bites you in the ankle, and you get to your car, and you shut your hand in the car door, you're having a bad day. And you say, this is a miserable day. I know what this day is going to be like. Well, you see, we'll let things rule and reign over us. Hear me. And, 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 and we're miserable through the whole day. Why can't we just lay it into the Lord's hands and say, Lord, I know these things are coming against me. I know, God, that what the devil's trying to do. And Lord God, if it's not the Holy Spirit doing the work in me, I'm going to fail miserably. And can I tell you, you know what that is? That's just being honest before the Lord. Am I right? Honest before the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I've discovered a thing. I've discovered, listen, hallelujah. If something's said bad about you or anything, don't retaliate right off the bat. But step back, take a few steps back, and meddle and think about it. Hear me. And allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart before you engage your mouth. Yeah. Have you ever said anything that you wish you would never have said? And you know what? You can't take those words back. So therefore, listen, some of the, one of the wisest things to do is before we ever say anything, say, Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me in this conversation. In the name of the Lord. Easier said than done. Especially if you're in a fight with your spouse. Hello? Hello? I mean, you know that we can needle each other real easy. You know where the tender spots are. And you know what? If something bad is said, you know where you're going to go to? The tender spot. He flung the mud at me. I'm going to flung a couple buckets of mud at him because I know where to hit him. You know where that's coming from? As being Christians? That's coming from the carnality of man. I'm not saying that you're not saved, but can I tell you something? You're going to be miserably saved if you live and operate your life like that. It doesn't have to be. Bless God. Can I tell you something? I've got, I've got the patent on a happy marriage. It's not a 12-step program. It's a one-stop shop, and it's at the cross of Jesus Christ. Hello? It's at the cross of Jesus Christ. 
It amuses me that people be placed under a 12-step program, hear me, and you do this, 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 and this, and you know what they're doing? They're putting you under law when you're supposed to be under grace. You will find no victory in 12-step programs, child of God, hear me. That's the world's method. God's method is the cross of Jesus Christ. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that? Hallelujah. A one-stop shop. And, uh, you know, uh, you could you could associate that with Walmart. You go to Walmart, you can get your pharmacy. You go to the pharmacy, you can get your oil changed. God forbid. <laughs> Hear me, you can get your food. Am I right? You can go sporting goods. You can get your fishing equipment. You can get your fishing license, your hunting license. You got everything right there in Walmart. You don't have to go to 15 different stores to get everything you need. Why is it we think we've got to go do this, 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 this? This, this, to get the victory when the victory lies right there in the name of the Lord. That's where it's at. It's all in the cross of Jesus Christ. And people want to do away with the cross. Folk, you cannot do away with the cross because when you do away with the cross, look at me, man comes up with 12-step programs. Hear me. You need professional counseling. Hear me. Can I tell you something? What is one of the names of Jesus Christ in Isaiah? Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. You can't find a better Counselor than the Holy Spirit counseling you in the name of the Lord. If you allow Him, if you allow Him, let Him lead you in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Bless the Lord. Let Him lead you through the valleys of the shadow of death. Hallelujah. That you'll fear no evil. Bless the Lord. Let Him live His life of holiness and purity in and through us. It's everything centered around the Holy Spirit. Everything. Bless the Lord. Neither yield or neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Listen to what he says. God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are. How you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of, of, or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. How many know what righteousness is? Right standing. Doing right deeds. Hallelujah to the language. No longer, listen, using our members, our body members, as instruments of righteousness, but our, our unrighteousness, but now they're used as instruments of righteousness. Only the Holy Spirit can do such things. Only the Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord. Now jump over, if you would, please, for just a second here, to the 8th chapter. Eighth chapter. Because this eighth chapter gives us the victory. Somebody say amen. As I said this morning, uh, chapter uh, 7, and we just talked a little bit about that tonight. Chapter 7 has the pronoun 31 times. I, 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 I. Can I tell you something? You can't do nothing without the Lord. Bless the Lord. But here in the 8th chapter, the Spirit is mentioned 20 times. Talking about the Spirit doing the work in us and for us in the name of Jesus. You cannot live a Christian life, listen, 
trying to obey rules and regulations. The only way you'll live a Christian life is to let the Holy Spirit live those rules and regulations through you. And somebody said, Amen. And amen. Now look at this. Hallelujah. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Hear me. Read. Who walk not after the flesh, but what? After the Spirit. Bless the Lord. Condemnation means to pass judgment with no mercy. Stop and think of this a second. Conviction is, to, is the work of the Holy Spirit towards the sin, uh, sinner at repentance and toward the, the saint, hear me, when we sin. There's a difference from com condemnation than conviction. Some people think that, you know, he's talking about there's no more conviction. That's wrong. Because when we're led of the Spirit of the Lord, if we do wrong, instantly the Holy Spirit will convict us and say that's wrong. We, 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 we obey the, the law, hear me, the commands of God, because the Spirit of the Lord tells us, bless God. Instantly, He tells us, bless God, you can't steal no more. You try to steal something, He'll instantly convict you and say, you can't steal that. You never had that before. But it's the Holy Spirit, listen, producing fruits of righteousness in and through us. Rightness before the Lord. Hallelujah. Condemnation. How many know the law condemns? The soul that sinneth shall surely die. The law, the law showed me that I was a sinner, but it had no remedy. Listen, hallelujah, for the sin factor in my life. It's a good law, but it has no remedy, listen, to save me. It shows me that I need a Savior. And that Savior, of course, is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Can you see something here? There's two laws here. And we'll, we as Christians will function in either one of these two. We'll either function, listen, in the law of the Spirit, which is life in Christ, or we'll function in the law of sin and death. Now here's where our will is once again. Hallelujah. If we will the Holy Spirit, you'll find peace and life in your walk and relationship with the Lord. Hear me. But if you walk by, listen, the dictates of your flesh, you're going to die. Spiritually, you would die and you will fail miserably. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Now look at this, this is a good part. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after what? The flesh, but after the Spirit. Hallelujah. So you see, the spirit profits not, or I'm sorry, the flesh profits us nothing. It all it profits is failure. But we're to be after the spirit of the living God. For they that are after the flesh, what? They do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, read, is death. Now, Look at this carnally minded. Carnally minded, uh, as I said this morning, it's not watching too much television. It's functioning and operating in your own willpower. Thinking you can do it alone. I can take this thing alone. I can handle this thing. You cannot handle it. That's why God give us the Holy Spirit. To lead us and guide us. To live inside of us, hear me. To sanctify us holy, pure, and righteous. Hallelujah. Why do you suppose they call the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit? What do you suppose the characteristics of the Holy Spirit is? Holiness. Holiness. Ought not our conversation be with all holiness and purity and conduct? That's the Spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But unholy talk comes from the carnality of mankind. Hallelujah. Folks, how, how we need to be led of the Spirit of the Lord. 
And I believe God is growing spiritual giants, hear me, right in this sanctuary, even tonight in the name of the Lord, because people want to live by the dictates, or by the, by the leadership of the Holy Spirit and not the dictates of the flesh. At least I don't. I know that. Bless the Lord. And as I say, I'm not, I'm not perfect. There's nobody in here perfect, hear me. There's only one perfect man, and he lives inside of me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And can I tell you something? He's sanctifying me daily. He's taken a lot of junk out of me over the past years. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And he'll take a lot more junk out of me until I go on home to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. But look at me. I've come a long way, honey. And you've come a long way as well. If you're led of the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. In other words, if you're trying to live, listen, out of your own strength and out of your own willpower, you're not going to please the Lord at all. You've got to be led by the Spirit of the Lord. But you are not in the flesh, but here it is again, in what? The Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of what? Sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Twelfth verse, read it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, 13, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Listen, you'll live a bit uh, 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 a defeated life as being a Christian. Trying to do it your way and trying to do it, listen, my, my way. Let's do it his way because that's where the victory is going to lie, child of God. Hallelujah. He says, for if you live after the flesh, you'll die. But if you, here it is, look at it, read it. But if you through, through what? Through the Spirit. Not you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit here. If you, through the Spirit, do mortify. How many know what the word mortify means? That's where we get the word mortation. Hear me? Mortify. Put to death. It's talking about dead. We're to reckon ourselves dead. We've seen that in the 6th chapter of Romans. Bless the Lord. If we, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Thank God I can live victoriously this side of heaven. I can live with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah to of the Lamb. I'm not worried about me performing because He's already performed for me. I just entered into His work in the name of Jesus and I'm enjoying the ride with my Lord and with my Savior. Hallelujah. And can I tell you something? Your life will attract the outside world. If we're living as being Spirit-filled children of the living God and Spirit-led in the name of the Lord Jesus. But if we're living out of our flesh, as I said Wednesday night, the only Bible some are going to read is your life. Your life. And your life will either point people, listen to Jesus, or point them away from Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want, to, I want my life to point people to Jesus. Amen. 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 To Jesus. Bless the Lord forevermore. And once again, I say this in all sincerity and in the uh, the, the, the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Uh, he's working on me and He's working on you. Yeah. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. He's not finished with me yet and He's not finished with you yet. Hear me. There'll be some mistakes that probably I'll make. There'll be mistakes that you make. But can I tell you something? You can't, get, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If we look at the paper Patience that God had with us. And that's part of the fruit of the Spirit. You can't produce patience on your own. Can't do it. If you look at the fruits of the Spirit, you cannot produce patience on its own. That is a fruit that only the Spirit can produce. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And we look at the patience that God had with us. 
I look at my own Christian walk, how much patience he had with me. And you know what? He could have stuffed my life out back when I was a teenager. But he didn't. He was very patient with me. You know what? I was running from the presence of the Lord ever since I was a, a wee kid. My dad took me to Bible school at a uh, uh, Baptist church out in just south of Delphi, Marion Baptist Church. And that stuck in my heart for years. Hear me. Don't think that kids don't retain things. Yes. Right. They certainly will. Yeah. And that went with me, man, for years. Hear me. And, and, and it just kind of dogged me and dogged me and dogged me. Even into, into my teenage years and what have you. And, and some of the things that I did and I look back on and some of the things when I got my driver's license and the way that I drove cars and, and drinking when I'm driving and different things. I should have been snuffed out a long time ago. But God was patient, hear me, with me, bless the Lord, and seen me through all of my discrepancies, brought me to the cross of Christ, look at me, hallelujah, changed me totally and completely, and He's still working on me yet today, sanctifying me until I go on home be with Him in glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But can I tell you something? I can be very patient with people. Something I never was before. Very patient. You know why? Because it's not me. Because I know me's would be patient. But I know the Holy Spirit produces that patience in me. And can I tell you something? Hallelujah. That's something that I taught, that I was taught over the years. Sometimes, hear me, some of the things that we learn of God, listen, it's taught over the years that you've served the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Some of you moms and, and dads, listen, listen uh, you're very impatient with your kids. Can I tell you something? They're going to grow up. They're going to grow out of that. Hallelujah. And can I tell you something? Sometimes we've got to be patient with new converts, hear me, because they're going to grow up and they're going to grow out of that if they be led of the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? If they be led of the Spirit of the Lord. But if they're not led by the Spirit of the Lord, look at me, they'll be most, one of the most miserable Christians and they'll be one of the most hindrances in the body of Christ to be led by their flesh. Hallelujah. What we need is a bunch of Christians, and I believe we're looking at them in the name of the Lord, that are led by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Not one of us can produce, listen, one ounce of, of patience. Am I right? Not one of us can produce, listen, uh, patience, and not one of us can produce love. Oh, now that's where you're wrong, Pastor Martin. No, that's where I'm right. Because, you know, we say, well, I can produce love. But you don't know the God type of love, the agape type of love. When somebody hurts you, you still love them. That's the type of love that we're talking about. You can't produce that in your own. Am I right? right? Hallelujah. You can't produce. You know what I found out? I found out this, especially with women. It seems like women hold grudges longer than what men do. Why is that? Why is that? Can I give you a word? Get over. Amen. Get over. Why? I don't. Why is it? You know, it seems like maybe maybe you've done something wrong or whatever. You know, and maybe, maybe you said something bad. And maybe you ask for forgiveness, and then you're over. But it just seems like you know, it just seems like. Let me preach. It just seems like, <laughs> It just seemed like, you know, it seemed like a man could get over something real quick, but yet, you know, you think your wife's over it, and then she'll bring it up to you three weeks later. And you go, what are you talking about? You done forgot about it already, but they still held it in here. Hear me. Sometimes we don't like it either. I've got a right to speak into some hearts here. I've been married, I've been years, 40-something years, 40 years. 
You don't know either. I mean, I've been 40 years in that area. Long time, bless the Lord. But, you know, I've been, I've been through those avenues. And even as being Christians, hear me, and being Christians. But can I tell you something? That's being babyish. That's being babyish Christians. Hear me. Hallelujah. But as we mature in the Lord, we learn to be patient with one another. You learn to be patient. You know what she likes, what she dislikes. You know to stay out of areas you should never be in. Amen. Right? Because you've been there and you know what's going to happen. If you start bringing something up, listen, that you know it's going to fester. It's kind of like a, you know, it's kind of like a, like a, 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 a what is it, a, no, not a snap trophy, but it's kind of like a, I was thinking of, I was thinking of, yeah, snap trophy. <laughs> Good knowledge as well, but it's kind of like a it's kind of like a splinter that you put it in your hand. Uh, I used to I used to get the, when I hunted all the time. I used to get them thistles in my hand, you know, the little thistles, and they'd stick in your hand or in your finger and stuff, and you wouldn't even know that it was there. But then you know, after a couple of days, man, you know, your hand gets sore, and you look at it, and there's a big red spot down there, and it's all festered up. And you look at it, and you go, man, what, what happened there? And all of a sudden, you know, when you press on it. Guess what happens? Pow! That's what happens a lot of times, listen, when arguments, heated arguments start to, to fester up. And all it takes is a little bit of pressure, and kapow, it explodes. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Understand something, folks. You're never going to win a battle. <laughs> You're never going to win a battle by seeing how much mud you fling. Evil words are going to fester up more evil. That's all there is to it. Bless the Lord for that more. And you know what? I've learned this over the years. Quit fighting with one another. I can see some of you now. You might have been in a fight. <laughs> I don't know why I brought that up. Anybody here fighting, feuding? No, don't be sure. <laughs> But you see, if we look at this, everything is in the cross of Christ. If we we'll just place our faith in there, look at me, our homes can be castles of love and not a war zone. Amen? Not a war zone. Praise the Lord forevermore. We thank God, bless the Lord, for some of the knowledge and wisdom that we have gained over the years. And, and some of the times when I need to keep my mouth shut. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. Because I know I can get myself in a lot of trouble if I say just a couple words. A couple words. But what are those words? Not for you to know. <laughs> My dad won't bring it up when she said that. So tempted, but bless God. We'll just stay right where we're at. Bless the Lord, and we'll go home happy, 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 happy. <laughs> Glory to God. But <laughs> please understand, Hallelujah! You cannot produce one ounce of the fruit of the Spirit. You know why? Because it's the Spirit's fruit. It's not you. You can't even produce that type of love. Listen, you can't be taught that type of love. Hallelujah. Look at me. The love of God is shed abroad in our heart by and through the Holy Spirit. Boy, that's a lot of information right there. Stop and meditate on that a little bit. God's love abides in me through the Holy Spirit. So that means, you know what? I can love my wife even if we're bickering and biting each other. Am I right? Hallelujah. That means I can love the body of Christ without bickering and biting one another. Am I right? Bless God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Why? Because God is perfecting every one of us. Hallelujah. And bearing forth the fruit of His Spirit. Bless God. We know what the fruit is. What is it in Galatians 5.22? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, meekness, faith, 
Against such there is no law. Let's go. We got enough time here. Let's go to John, if we would please. John 15. Are you getting anything out of this tonight? Just yeah. hang with me for a few minutes, if you would please. John 15. It tells you right here that, that we're bankrupt in ourselves. Listen to what it says. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Anybody ever, anybody ever lop off a limb on a tree so that it can produce more? You, a lot of trees got sucker shoots on. And you know what? The sucker shoots is what saps the strength out of the, out of the true shoot, of the, the, of the, of the branch. So you got to take the sucker shoots off. Can I tell you something? If we'll look at that sucker shoots in our life, that's what the Holy Spirit is lopping off out of us. Those sucker shoots. So that we can produce forth more fruit of the Spirit. You can't do it in yourself. It's a work of the Holy Spirit and only the Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord. Now look what he says here. Now you... You, uh, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch, what? Cannot bear fruit of itself. Look at me. The branch can't bear any fruit. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. We, the only way it's going to bear fruit is that we abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. Except it abide in the vine. And no more can you except you abide in me. Now listen to what he says. Jesus says this. I am the vine. You're the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. We just talked about what the fruits of the Spirit was in Galatians 5. That's all produced. Listen. By the Holy Spirit. You can't produce none of that. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, comfort, meekness, and faith. It's that Holy Spirit doing that work in us. If we will let Him do that work, we can stifle that. We know that. If we we'll allow the sin nature to rule and reign in our lives, the sin nature has got to be rendered dead. Everybody say dead. So that, listen, the fruit of the Spirit can be produced in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. If a man uh, abide not, in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be, uh, shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and, the, and abide in in His love. Hallelujah. Now, how many know you can't keep the commands without the Holy Spirit? Because we just read, you can't do anything without the Spirit. I can do nothing without the Lord. Hallelujah. The only way you're going to keep the commands is through, listen, the Spirit of the living God. He's the one that kept it, kept it for us. And thank God for that because He's cloaked me with His righteousness. And I'm learning to produce, listen, the fruits of righteousness a righteousness through the power of God's Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. We're keeping the law, hear me, not in my effort and not in your effort, but we're keeping it through the effort of the Holy Spirit. Working the law inside of us in Jesus' name. Boy, that's good news. Why do you suppose Jesus called him a comforter? Why do you suppose he called him a helper? He comes along and girds us up and helps us through. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the fruit of the Spirit that's born within our hearts and within our lives. Bless the Lord forevermore. He says, Herein is my Father glorified, per se, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. 
Can I tell you something? When we don't live by the Spirit of the Lord, joy will be, be depleted out of us. The joy will start going. It'll, it'll go bye-bye. The peace will go bye-bye. Hear me. But as long as we live by the Spirit of the living God, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Even if I've had a bad day, I can come in and stand behind the pulpit and preach the, with the anointing of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You know why? Because I'm not allowing what the outside has done, but I'm allowing what the inside is doing in the name of the Lord. That's a good word. You need to give the Lord a hand. Clap and pray to the Lord God. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You can't produce one ounce of holiness or one ounce of purity or righteousness. It's all the work of God's Holy Spirit. I say, Holy Spirit, here am I. Work on me. I'm yours. Hallelujah. I'm yours. Everything that I am, everything that I'm not, I belong to you. And I allow you to work your work inside of me. Bless the Lord forevermore. You know what? You find out that there is joy as being a Christian. You find out, hey, I can come in with a spring in my step and a smile on my face and my hands lifted up to praise the name of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because you're not letting the outside influence you. Hallelujah. But you're letting one on the inside bring forth the fruit of his righteousness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any questions tonight? Bless the Lord. Any questions? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say this ain't got good. Amen. Let me ask this. Is God still working on you? Yes. Are you allowing God to work on you? Yes. We've got to constantly, continuously let him work on us. And can I tell you something? When you are going to be perfected is when this mortal puts on the immortality. Hear me. And we stand in the presence of the Lord, clothed in his righteousness with our new, listen, body. That's going to be prepared for you and for me. I don't know about you, but what a day that's going to be when my Jesus I shall see. Everything that we've went through here on the face of the earth will stand in his presence and say, it's been worth it all, every bit of it. Bless the Lord. And evermore. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the half has never yet been told. And somebody said amen and amen. Let's stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. 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 Hear me. Stop doing it your way and let the Holy Spirit do His way. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity, Lord, just to share a little bit of your word tonight. And God, I thank you and I praise you that we not just hear the word, Father, but Lord God, we allow the word to work mightily within us in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you that there is no condemnation to them that walk by the spirit of the living God. And Lord, we thank you and praise you, Father, as you help us, Lord God, to look to the cross every day of our life, for daily we die unto the Lord. Hallelujah, our daily we die to the fleshly man. And Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, that we take up a cross and follow after you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be blessed and be honored in my life, Lord, throughout this week, if you should tarry. Let people see the resurrected Christ living in me and through me in the name of the Lord. Lord, help me to be a blessing to someone this week in the name of Jesus that you send them across our path in Jesus' name. And we truly thank you and praise you for the leadership of your Holy Spirit and the finished work of the cross of Calvary. And everybody said amen and amen. Give me one more hand clap of praise, Lord God. And I'm done. I'm just Bless the Lord.